Hello, good evening. This is Tuesday evening. And this is uh, Westminster's meditation for the day. And I hope you all are I hope you all are doing well. And um, I've been at the church last couple days. And never have I felt as protected at the, ch at the church as I do these days since I can walk outside the church and walk 50 yards and encounter soldiers in fatigues and military style rifles protecting the downtown area, especially the Capitol and Capitol Park. So I feel very protected. On the other hand, I feel very unsettled and uh, grieved about uh, what these soldiers mean for our nation and the conflict in our nation that these soldiers represent. And uh, like many of you have been trying to process the recent events, the election of course, the, the COVID nightmare, the events of January 6th, been trying to process all of these and what's going on, what has caused all this uh, contention and unrest and um, wake up in the middle of the night and not disturbed but rather just continuing to process thinking I can't go back to sleep going to thinking what does this mean especially in light of our faith and our scriptures and and just continually trying to work this out in my head um, and so I have to kind of stop myself and um, step back from all these uh, cognitive processes that's trying to work out you know, what's going on right now and uh, rely on my faith and rely on my spirituality to give me some space and so tonight I am going to read some scriptures that might provide us some space I'm going to be preaching on a couple of these scriptures on Sunday and so if you have any comments that might help me in my sermon uh, feel free to uh, put them in the comments section. The first scripture I'm going to read is actually a Taoist scripture. It's from the uh, 4th century BCE Chinese philosopher Cheng Zhu and it's just very brief and then I'm going to read something from Paul, 1 Corinthians, then I'm going to finish with Psalm 62. First, here is Chuang Tzu, just a brief little poem. Let us forget the lapse of time. Let us forget the conflict of opinions. Let us make our appeal to the infinite and take up our positions there. Let us make our appeal to the infinite and take up our positions there. Next I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 29 through 31. This is the Apostle Paul writing to a Corinthian church that was expecting Jesus to return very, very soon. And so they kind of wondered what the point was in doing anything in life, really. So um, if you have a fiance, I mean, if, if Jesus is coming very soon and the end of the world as you know it is going to happen, what's the point of getting married to your fiance? Um, what's the point of making in, any big decisions regarding to career or where you live or anything? What's the point of fighting for what is right in the world, social justice, if the world is going to be upended supernaturally by Jesus very soon? And so um, Paul is trying to address these issues. And so I'm going to just read three verses, chapter uh, 7 of 1 Corinthians 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none. 
and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of the world is passing away. So uh, when I was younger, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, an evangelical church, and um, in this church, there was never any, any political engagement, no social justice engagement. All my growing up years in this church, you know, and this was during the Vietnam War, there was never once from the pulpit a mention of the Vietnam War and whether it was right or wrong. And this was amid, of course, societal unrest about this very question. There was never any um, sermons or talk about racism or about the civil rights movement. And this was during the time of race riots. This was during a time when Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. There was just never any talk like this. Uh, I remember the strangest thing that happened was the only time po politics ever entered that I can remember in the conversation of the church is when one of the ushers was running for the board of supervisors in the county. And he, he and some other ushers were coming down to receive the offering and the pastor asked this usher to pray. And the way he asked him was to say, uh, I'd ask so-and-so, our next member of the Board of Supervisors, to pray. And I remember that so clearly because it was just so strange to hear this fellow mention, the board, the pastor mentioned the Board of Supervisors um, in just this offhand way because it was so strange for any conversation about politics to enter um, the sanctuary. And so what is so strange to me is we've gone from this place where it was never mentioned in these evangelical churches and then to this place of January 6th where you saw all these symbols of Christian uh, conservatism, fundamentalism, uh, there rushing into the capital and how in the 1980s uh, evangelicals came out of the sanctuary and they started entering the public square and and in churches, there were there was talk about uh, right and wrong, and t and it tended to be uh, very conservative. And now, in many evangelical s circles, um, they are engaging these con conspiracy theories, and there are prophecies. Now, when I was young, the prophecies in the, there were prophecies in the church, but they always had to do with you know Jesus coming back very soon or you know, get your heart right with God and that sort of thing. But prophecies now in these churches have a political dimension to them. Um, I have a Facebook friend who's very conservative and, and he posted some of these apologies from these so-called prophet, Christian prophets, uh, because they were prophesying that Trump was gonna win the election and that Trump would then expose the deep state and all the corruption in uh, politics and in our government. And of course, after Trump wasn't elected and it turned out that the election wasn't gonna be overthrown, um, these various prophets uh, issued uh, apologies. And so it just spoke to me of how the game had changed where these um, Christians had entered sort of the temporal realm and left the spiritual realm that they had always concerned themselves with and uh, began to engage in politics. And so we've read from 1 Corinthians here and Paul is talking about the end of time 
which they expected very soon. And um, although it has a very apocalyptic element, I think it shouldn't be too strange for us because we all engage time all the time. And um, we understand that this present form of the world is passing away, at least as far as we know it. History moves on, things change, people live, people die, movements come, movements go. Um, and that uh, we are always dealing with this world that is progressing. And so even though this is apocalyptic, I think it speaks to us. And it, and it speaks to us of this, of this middle way between abandoning the world and engaging it so much that it, that it um, receives your full attention and you are stressed by it because it's, uh, you're in this win or lose, live or die sort of mentality. And so he invites us to, as uh, Zhuang Zhe does, says, to appeal to the infinite, take up our position in the infinite. And so Paul is, is saying this middle way of, yes, engage the world, but do it as if your life doesn't depend upon it. Engage social justice issues, but be aware that you are, and the world is larger than any particular issue you're dealing with. And so he says, let those who have wives be as though they had none. Let those who are mourn, who mourn as though they are not mourning. Let those rejoice, but as though they were not rejoicing. Let those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as, they, as though they had no dealings with it. How do we deal with the world and yet step back from it and recognize that we belong to the infinite, we belong to God, Christ has claimed us. This world cannot claim us in any way, shape, or form. So anyway, that's my medita meditation for the day. And I hope that you kind of think about it throughout this week too. And like I said, I'll be preaching about it on Sunday. And so I'll leave you with the Psalm text for some Sunday, or at least a piece of it. This is Psalm 62. And it has the same flavor as Corinthians and as the reading from Zhuangzi. Psalm 62 five through, oh, this is about 10. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is our God. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances, they go up together. They are together, lighter than breath. Peace be with you all.